you know, I've heard some really disturbing stories about the uh, P. Diddy case. And uh, this morning, like, I woke up and it's like, I'm disturbed. Like, I'm, something is disturbing my spirit. And the last thing, the last story that I heard was about this, the woman that was in the studio and uh, she had had her manager with her. Her manager was a woman and they were in this big studio and uh, she said that uh, uh, Puff Daddy and Kanye had given her a drink and somehow in her spirit she knew that this drink was laced because of just how they were acting and then you know she so she knew something was so she pretended to drink it and she took her phone and she was gonna uh, text her um, the manager who was a woman who was her friend and say tell her not to drink the drink but um, Kanye took her phone from her and put it on the speaker and was like who you calling like something like that and of course, you know, she's like laughing it off because she's in an awkward situation, right? An awkward situation that's about to turn dangerous. And um, so then uh, basically, long story short, um, the manager passes out or she goes to the bathroom and she never pretty, I think in this story, we never hear about the manager again. And so um, Puffy and Kanye start making advances towards her and there's other men in the room so she keeps thinking like no i'm okay like i'm okay this is like you know whatever and um they are like trying to take off her her shirt and everything and they've pretty much done that and so like she's just she's still kind of convinced i mean she's like she knows she's in a bad situation but she's still kind of convinced like there's other people in the room there's an engineer um there's someone else like people that work there, maybe like two other men. And I think, uh, Puffy and Kanye are the ones that are basically like a, tr essentially attacking her, but not like forcefully yet. And so as they're starting to, it's getting worse and they've gotten her shirt off and now they're going for her pants. She, the worst part of the story, what's haunting me is that this woman looks up at the engineer who is a male and like as to say hey is anybody gonna help me and this man looks away and then she looks at the other guy in the room who she says she knows who has who's married has kids and she looks in his direction like all right game over you're gonna come and help me right and she said, this man looks down at his phone. And so she, she now she starts to panic. And she's like, she knows that she's like, she's no one's coming to save her quite literally. And so then she says she just closes her eyes and she prays to God. And she says, God, help me. And the spirit of God tells her to go forward. And of course she thinks it's like the, 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 the silliest. She thinks she, like she said of all the times, I come to ask for God for help. And he says this, she said she thought it was the devil. And, but anyway, well, she's, she, what else can she do? So she just listens to the, to God's voice, the Holy spirit. And God tells her to go forward. And she, that's what she does. She goes forward. And because uh, they're like pretty much inebriated, they're not, they're stumbling and stuff, they fall back. And then when they fall back, there's like an exit door behind her and she, she runs out and they go hide. Like she said, she hid in the studio. I said all that to say that like what, like this, the part that is disturbing me the most is that these men, these people didn't do anything and that doesn't take away the blame from the actual people, but I don't know, just open up this, like, I'm, ha I'm having this huge epiphany this morning. Um, and one of the things um, th that I'm thinking is, um, in my life, um, 
I've had, I, I would, I thought that I, I told myself that I missed out on things because I, I lived a sheltered life. When I was younger, I grew up in the church and the, the church group that we were in, like we had to wear dresses down to our knees. Like we were always, we looked like Little House on the Perry. And I remember she used to make me wear this huge bow and I hated it, I hated it, I hated it. And um, people would make fun of me. They, you know, they would call me dress girl. And um, I just, I, I never, I didn't, f like I just hated it, right? And you know, I didn't have my first boyfriend until I was 19. And I always thought, I was like, you know, I was such a late bloomer. I didn't have any experience. I feel like, you know, this and that. I feel naive. And I'm very old now. <laughs> and I have never had an abortion. I've never taken a morning after pill. Um, I've never been assaulted in any way. All my experience with men have been positive, which is why... Um, I'm almost like blinded to the side of men and let me finish. And so, um, and then what I think is the most important part about this, about my story is that God was protecting me and I have to, that has, that was his protection he put me in that family, in that situation to protect me, right? And even one time when I was in a, I was in a prayer group, I was, we were praying and we were, you know, laying hands on one another. And, you know, the church has, is compromised. And I believe that there was a man in that prayer group, you know, it was, I don't think it was a spontaneous prayer group. It's not like it was a prayer group that he was weekly coming to. It was like, we were, we were having a discussion. It was like a, like a Bible, it was like a Bible class of sorts. And, um, at the end we had just decided to pray. So just so you know, like it, this guy was not like hanging out at the prayer group. And, um, he, like, he went to go like lay hands on me. And this man said he physically couldn't touch me. Like he, like he felt restrained from touching me, like to put his hands on me. And I know what, and, I, and in hindsight, so first of all, God, the spirit of God wasn't even allowing him to touch me. And because, because I believe this man was inundated with demons because he was living a compromised lifestyle just from, you know, his, me and his wife, we were talk. And so she, she didn't tell me, she was just telling me the kind of issues that they were having. And so because of those things, I know this man was living a compromised lifestyle. And I'm just kind of just like going back and forth in my mind. Like all these years, I thought that I missed out on something. I resented the people that raised me because I just was just like, they shelter me. I didn't experience life and all this and all this and all this. And, and, you know, everything was a lie in our lives, but what, I am understanding for, for my situation is that, um, these women who are going out on these dates and they got their nice purse and bags and they do their makeup and you know how, you know, they dress, you know, whatever, um, they're having a hard time out there and they're not telling you the full story, right? And these men in this world and people in this world, they're vicious. They won't protect you. They won't stand up for you. They won't say anything. And that's what I'm learning. And I want to, if you've gotten this far in this video, and I'm actually running out of time, but if you've gotten this far in this video, I may do a part two. Um, I want to tell you women what has kept me safe. And I think that it may help you, but I'm going to do a part two because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to do a part two. So this is part two of, I was saying that, you know, this morning I woke up, I was truly disturbed in my spirit because I'm hearing all the, all the stories are coming out 
about these celebrities and anything. And the one in particular was about Puff Daddy and Kanye. And the most disturbing part of this story that this woman told me was that uh, as she was being attacked, people, no one in the room helped her. So this is where we were. Go back and watch part one if you want the full story. But, um, and I was saying to, uh, I was telling people that, um, you know, when I was growing up, I thought that I, I was extremely sheltered and I resented that. I was angry at that. And I went to therapy for that because I was like, I missed out on life. I thought this was the reason why I wasn't married. I thought like all these things and, and yes, they have their perspective to play. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great life, but I now know that God was protecting me in ways that I've, I couldn't fathom. So I want to thank God for that, you know, like publicly and for the, even though, um, the people that, um, I felt stunted my growth in ways in a lot of ways. And, you know, were, were, were mean to me in a lot of ways. It was God's way of protecting me. That environment protected me. And I know now that he's protecting me because I'm hearing these stories. I'm hearing what I missed out on and to God be the glory. I I'm so glad I did because I'm understanding that these women who ladies, even the ones that are married right now, I'm talking to women of God, really, um, who we think like, um, are living the dream. First of all, the dream is a lie. Um, and they're not, the, these women aren't telling the full story. They're having a hard go at it. And they, they're really just been put into the slaughterhouse and then they come out and they put their makeup back on and they do it again. And so we have this illusion um, that they're really winning, but obviously they're not. And, you know, this is no shade to them because, you know, we all have uh, stories and understanding and, and, you know, a lot of women were mistreated. Um, and, and there's so many layers to this, but I wanted to come on here and tell, uh, women what has kept me safe all, all these years. And one of the things that I've said in my last video is that you know, I didn't have my first boyfriend until I was 19. Um, I never had an abortion. I've never taken a morning after pill. I don't have any kids right now. And that should tell you that, you know, I've lived a sheltered life, right? And um, I'm not perfect, but I did live a sheltered life. And I know now, I, this is what I'm waking up to understand, like my having an epiphany. Like, I, I, God was protecting me. And I think what kept me safe besides that God sheltered me, he kept me like he literally sheltered me. I thought, I thought the word sheltered was negative. So, um, God forgive me for that. But from my, pers from a, ch from your, a child's perspective, you, you don't understand until you get older. And one of the things that has kept me safe ladies is that, um, is, is how I've dressed. Um, all, so, cause all those critical years, um, I was like forced <laughs> and then I just began to like it and try to create my own style. If I ever had the freedom to, if they would allow me to, um, you know, I, I was modestly dressed. I literally wore dresses down to my ankles. I was very covered and I am a shapely woman. <laughs> so, uh, and, and a lot of, and and I want to say, because I know that this modern society will tell you otherwise, and there's this um, rhetoric of my body, my choice, but my body, my choice is getting y'all in trouble. And I'm not saying this is why, again, I want to preface that, of course, overall, God has been protecting me, but I'm telling you that men won't even look at you. They don't, because they know what time it is they know that their intentions, they have no, and they're not looking for anything serious. So why would they mess with you? And I think ladies, we, we misunderstand modest dressing. I think we think that, um, it's like, it's not, it's like, Oh, it's like almost like you're not, it's like, we think they're shackles or we like, why should I have to, uh, why can't men just, um, cover like why can't men just be because men are obviously out there being men 
go look at the last video of the men turning away, turning a blind eye, and that these other, and that like these celebrity, all men, like they're like attacking these women because. I don't know how a man thinks and men won't be honest with us. Maybe like your father or your brother, maybe if he's nice or if you have a really good man in your life, he may tell you the truth about these, about what men are thinking, but you know, they keep a nice secret tight cap on it, you know? And so I'm telling you what has kept me safe. I'm telling you what has worked for me. I've never been assaulted in any way and I've never, um, that's why like, I'm not really afraid of men like that. And I, I've always, the men, my, my, my father, my brother, they've always protected me. And so I'm how I'm learning women have been treated. Like this is, I mean, of course I've heard these things before, but I, but I'm like, I'm, I'm telling you what has protected me. So if you want to know, you can take this information or you can leave it, but I'm telling you what has protected me. And what has protected me is that I was, I was, I I dressed modestly, um, up until I got out of the house, which was like 18, 19. And I still, and then because I had been dressed so modestly, I just, I never felt comfortable like wearing like scantily clothes. And I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I mean, I, I tried to look cute though, you know what I'm saying? But I never, um, I never felt extremely comfortable like having my stuff hanging out and all this stuff like that. And so I'm telling you what is going to protect you, what's going to protect your, your, your girls, because we're obviously in our last days and it's about to get worse. And the first thing that's going to protect you is to get a relationship with God. Because I said back in the other story how God physically like this. We were even praying. This man tried to lay hands on me. And God would not even allow him to touch me. So that's the first thing you need to do is get a relationship with God. The second thing is how you dress. Um, covering yourself. And I'll tell you the reason why you do that. And, um, is because the men won't even look at you. Trust me. Like you almost feel, you start to feel like you're ugly. You start to get low self-esteem because you like, but it's not, it's not what I was thinking It's because they, 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 they think that they, they won't even look my direction because they're looking for the easy prey. And so the reason why they wouldn't even talk to me or touch me because, um, they just looked at me as something that uh, they weren't interested because it's like, that's not what their intentions were. Their intentions wasn't to get a modest girl that was like, you know, I'm not ready for that. And so that's what protected me, how I dressed. And so I think if you want to, and, and you can say what you want about, you know, I have the freedom that's what freedom's getting you. Freedom freedom is getting you raped. Freedom is getting you taken advantage of. I mean, there's so many layers to this, but this is a start. And I know there's going to be people saying, "Oh, you know, like what about the children?" Uh, it's a it's a lot of layers here, but I'm I'm just telling you from my perspective what has helped me, and it's been how I dressed. And it's been I've been very and then I just think that that's, that's the best advice I can give you right now. And I think we have to recondition our mind as to what the world has been telling us about how women dress. It's obviously been a lie. And I think also what that does is just, it, it, any per- man that's not have, that doesn't have good intentions, he won't even look your way. And it has nothing to do with you being pretty or ugly. That's what I'm realizing right now.